Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, open up the uh, uh, database uh, violent crime. Okay, and let's take a look at some of the uh, data that we have here. Now, one of the things that came up during the lecture is is that when you're working on your project, you're going to be examining various data sets, right? And as you examine that data set, you have to say to yourself, what kind of variables am I, what am I trying to prove? What kind of variables am I working with? If you're de dealing with two numerical, if you're working with uh, uh, two variables, categorical variable and numerical variable, where the categorical variable is the groups that you're going to break up that numerical variable in. For instance, uh, gender, and uh, blood pressure, right? Well, you know that categorical variable, gender, male and female, and numerical variable, which if there's two categories in that, in that uh, 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 categorical variable, male and female, you can use a t-test to compare the male average blood pressure to the female average blood pressure. If you are in a situation where you're dealing with a categorical variable and numerical variable for each person in that study, and the categorical variable has more than two values, not just male or female, or uh, you know took a drug or didn't take a drug, and so on and so forth, but that in fact it has additional categories. For instance, borough of borough that they live in. There's five boroughs, so it can have five values. So you can have five means for blood pressure for people in Brooklyn, Bronx, so on and so forth. In that case, since you're comparing five means at the same time, you're going to use an ANOVA, right, analysis of variance, right? So you can determine if there is a difference in the means of any of the uh, mean blood pressures for the different boroughs. If you're dealing with two categorical, two pieces of categorical data, for instance, uh, uh, gender and whether or not someone has had chickenpox during some time in their lifetime. Well, you have gender, male and female, two categories. Uh, two, vari two variables, uh, two categories within that variable, two, va two values. Uh, and you have chickenpox, yes, they had it or no, they didn't have it. So how would we organize that data? Well, typically we would organize it into a contingency table. And what kind of statistics would we be looking at? Right. Chi-square and odds ratio. If it's two, if it's two by two, we can also do odds ratio and relative risk, right? If it's not two by two, for instance, if we looked at uh, boroughs, uh, you know, look by, you know, the one category was borough of uh, uh, residents. So we had five rows and we had chicken pox or not chicken pox. That would be a five by two table, right? Now that one, we wouldn't really be able to directly predict odds ratio or uh, relative risk using SPSS. There's kind of a way you could do it if you had like some something that like maybe the average for the entire city or something like that. There's some ways that you might be able to apply it, but usually when you're looking at odds ratio or relative risk, it's for a two by two table. But you can apply chi-square to a two by two table, a two by three, a three by five, with whatever kind of contingency table that you want to. Okay? So, so we have chi-square. So now finally, the last thing we have is now we have a way that we can uh, uh, look at uh, two, two variables that are both numerical variables. In other words, uh, something like uh, uh, blood sugar and uh, 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 blood lead level or um, uh, 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 any number of, you know, any number of combinations that you want. Let's take a look at this database right now. Okay, in this database, one of the variables I see is the murder rate. That's so many per, I guess, thousand or something like that or 10,000, and the poverty rate, that's represented as a percentage. In other words, a percentage of that population uh, in that location. And we have like different, we have 50 pieces of data, I guess, one for every state, or maybe 51, I guess it includes uh, Washington, D.C., so we have 51 uh, subjects, which are states. Um, so we have a poverty rate for each state, and we have the murder rate for each state. Well, one of the speculations I might make is that there's an association between the rate of poverty in a state and the murder rate in that state. Okay, let's, let's test that assumption. Okay, first thing I'm going to do to test that assumption is I'm going to do what? Just to get a look at it visually. I'm going to do a scatter plot, right? So I'm going to go graph, legacy dialogues, scatter dot. 
I'm going to pick, pick, pick simple scatter, click define. And now, again, it's not going to matter at this stage which one I put in the X and the Y uh, axis. I just want to see if there's an association. I'm going to say violent uh, murder rate. I'm going to put that, say, in the Y. I'm going to put po poverty in the X axis. I almost automatically wind up doing it, you know, depend doing it the way I'm expecting it to work out anyway. Okay, and I'm going to click OK. I'm going to produce that scatter plot. And does it look like there's an association? Ew. Yeah, there's a little bit of a problem here. What do you see here? There's an outlier. That outlier is, I should be able to click on it and get, that outlier is, that outlier is Washington, D.C. <laughs> it is, as a matter of fact. I'm going to go back into the data. I'm going to look at, here, where's Washington, D.C.? Washington State. Number nine. I'm going to pull a quick one here. I'm going to click on number nine. I'm going to tell it to delete. Yeah, okay, yeah. Don't, you know, don't criticize me yet. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to get rid of that outlier. There's, a, there's more elegant ways to get rid of an outlier than to do it this way. However, I'm just deleting that row from this data. I'm going to take a look at this. I'm going to analyze this again. Something's going on in Washington that made the murder rate very high. Small population. Maybe there was, maybe there was a, uh, 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 for instance, 2001, the murder rate in New York was enormous. What happened in 2001 to make the murder rate in New York enormous? 9-11, right? That was all considered homicides or murders, right? So something may have happened in Washington that year to give me that outlier. So I'm eliminating that data just so I can analyze the rest of it. Legacy dial, oh, excuse me. I'm going to go to legacy dialogue, scatter dot. This, I'm going to do it again. Okay, and the axes are still there. Let's see if I get a better look at this now. Well, I sure did get a better look at it. It does look like there's a correlation, a positive correlation. More poverty in a state, higher murder rate. Doesn't look like a great one. It's not as tight as what we're looking at with age and blood sugar, but then I made that data up so I can make it look good, right? So I'm just going to click in there and uh, uh, just get have a, give me a, a best fit line. Okay, and good. Okay, you may notice that it also calculates for you R squared right off the bat. As it turns out, it looks like there's a correlation here, right? And as it turns out, the correlate the R squared is equal to, that's the coefficient of determination that's called. That R squared, which kind of predicts how much of one variable is predicted by the other, is only 18% here. That means that there's a lot of other stuff that, that uh, 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 influences the murder rate than just the poverty rate in the state. Okay, obviously that seems re reasonable. That doesn't mean that we don't have a cor positive correlation here that's statistically significant. Let's give it a try. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna close this, get it out of my way, and I'm gonna go in here, analyze. Uh, I'm gonna go into correlation first, bivariate. I'm gonna move in murder rate, and poverty rate, I'm going to click OK and see what my R value is. Okay, it's equal to 0.427. What's my null hypothesis? That rho or R is equal to zero. My alternative hypothesis is that's different than zero. It comes out to 0.427, and our significance is 0 0.002, probability being wrong if we reject the null hypothesis that there's no association between poverty and murder rate or that rho is not equal to zero. In other words, is, uh, reject the idea that rho is equal to zero. Uh, that uh, we have a very low chance of being of making a type one error of uh, reject. So we reject the null hypothesis. We say there is an association that rho is not equal to zero. OK, so now let's go ahead and, and try and, and, and uh, use this uh, as a predictive measure. We'll do a regression. Analyze, regression, linear. Okay, this time I'm I'm assuming, which may be right or wrong, that the poverty rate is the independent variable, and the murder rate is the dependent variable. In other words, uh, uh, a poverty is the predictor of the rate of uh, murder murders. Okay, so I'm going to go in here at the same time. I'm going to go into plots. 
And I'm gonna I'm gonna do my histogram for my residuals and my Z predicted and Z residual again. Okay, I'll hit continue. So I'm gonna do all of this stuff at one time. As they say in the Godfather, I'm gonna take care of all the family business at once. I'm gonna click and save and say unstandardized predicted values and unstandardized residuals. And maybe I'll even say standardized residuals too. And I'm gonna click okay, it's gonna do all the stuff that we did before all at once. Okay, so here's our R, R uh, which is 0.427. That's squared multiplied by itself. It gives R 18% for our co uh, coefficient of determination. Um, and let's see, uh, it's a statistically significant result. Um, and let's go down here to our uh, 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 coefficients. So if we're going to use this to fit a uh, formula, okay, uh, the coefficient is the what? That represents what? What part of our formula for our line? The coefficient, the constant is the the y intercept, right? Where it crosses the um, uh, where x is where it crosses the y axis where x is equal to zero. Okay, and the uh, poverty, uh, uh, this coefficient for poverty is the slope. Okay, so what does that mean? What this coefficient for poverty is telling us that for every 1% increase in the poverty rate, right, the, the, the units were percent in poverty, for every 1% increase in the poverty rate, we get about a third of a murder per thousand people increase in the murder rate. That's what this is predicting. Okay, so now we can apply this. I, I'm not going to bother to write the formula out right now. We can apply this to our, uh, 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 all of the values for all these different states and uh, tell it to calculate all the predicted values based on the state and the residuals uh, uh, for, those, uh, for those values. So in other words, for, let's say for Arizona, right, the, mer the poverty rate was 13.5 and our formula would have predicted that the murder rate was... 5.3, so uh, am I, what am I looking at here? Something's wrong there. 13.5, uh, predicted value. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Poverty rate is 13.5. We predicted that the murder rate, excuse me, we predicted that the murder rate was 5.35. It's actually seven, so we're 1.6 off on the murder rate. That's our residual, plus 1.64. On the other hand, if I go over to Colorado, we underestimated the murder rate with our formula. The residual is negative 4.3176, right? Negative 0.43. Okay, we're, we're off by that much. Now, what should we see in these residuals? These residuals should be random, right? The error that we have should be random, okay? So I need to look at the plot of these residuals. I need to see what, what the, uh, whether they're normally distributed. So let's take a look at the plot of the standardized residuals. And do they look normally distributed? Kind of, right? Not too bad. And does the plot of the, uh, do I see any pattern in the plot of the reg standardized reg uh, the standardized values for the predicted values and the standardized values for the residuals. Now it doesn't look like I see much organization there at all. I don't see something that I could call like a uh, uh, any kind of uh, correlation between one and the other, right? And I don't see them all piled up in the corner here and few over here or something like that. Look pretty random, right? So that's encouraging. Right. However, there's a lot of other things that are uh, 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 that obviously are influencing the murder rate because only 18 or 20 percent was attributable in this formula to the poverty rate. That means 80 percent of the variability is somewhere else. Levi, are we going to be are we going to be discussing multiple regression next week? I'm sorry. Is that linear? It'll mostly be statistic regression. I might mention something. Okay. All right. Well, just just suffice it to say 
that it's possible for you to look at more than one predictor at the same time so that you can adjust your formula so that you can calculate, you can try and predict what the murder rate is going to be based not only on the poverty rate, but what are the variables that we have there? Let's take a look. Perhaps you can use both the poverty rate and the uh, uh, percentage of single parent families and the unemployment rate and so on and so forth and other factors together rather than individually to give you a better predictor. Kind of a formula that says your poverty, your murder rate is equal to your some some slope, some value time, uh, uh, which is your slope for your murder for your poverty rate plus some value uh, times your uh, 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 single parent rate plus some value times your uh, uh, unemployment rate plus and so so that you, overall that formula is much more predictive than an individual any one of those individual values would be. Okay, that's kind of a multiple regression. You're looking at multiple values at the same time, multiple variables as predictors at the same time. Okay, but we're not going to worry about that for, for this semester. We'll hold that off until you have a chance to really, you know, get you into a situation where you're going to have to learn some tough stuff. Okay, so how did, anybody got any questions so far? How about you guys online? Okay, so if I put up a couple of problems, I by the way, I graded everything up to the uh, chi-square, which we're doing, you know, I kind of made do tonight. So everything has been graded up to that point. So if you haven't submitted the homework, I, you know, I'm not going to, you know, I, I would rather that you submit something and maybe I'll knock off a few points for being late and tardy and not, you know, not keeping up with your fellow students and stuff like that. But I would rather not have a zero in there for homework. So any homework at all in a whole semester, if you haven't submitted it up there, you're not going to get, what you would have got if you did it on time, but you'll certainly do much better than, you know, not submitting it at all. Yes. Uh, yeah, the, the due dates for the last three, I'm grading them as we go along. So for instance, on what we're doing today, because I want you to be able to use these tools for your, um, uh, uh, for your uh, project, right? These are, you want to be able to use, you may need to use chi-square odds ratio. You may need to use analysis variance. You may need to use regression and so on and so forth for your project. However, I'm going to put something up for correlation or regression so that, and I'll, you know, and, and what I'm going to do is just like this past weekend, I'll review it on Saturday or Sunday online so that you can see me do it online, but then you'll still have to go back. I'm, I won't post it as something you can copy and paste. You're still going to have to go back and do it yourself. Okay. But at least if you get stuck, you can go back to the video and see how it's done. OK, but I'm more concerned about the older homeworks. If you got like homework three, you didn't do that. Go back and do that for me. OK, so so and like I said, I can't give you the full credit for it because it won't be fair to the other guys that did it on time and stuff like that. But I can certainly make it a lot better for you guys. You know, then we don't have to worry about averaging in like, you know, zeros and stuff like that. OK, so anytime, you know, all of those homeworks, if there are any of them that will not allow you to resubmit something, just let me know and I'll fix it. And I can tell when it was submitted by the dates that they arrived. Yes. I'm sorry. Did I grade 4B? I think I did, yeah. Okay, unless. I, I, I can't open it on here because then you'll see everybody's grades and stuff like that. Just remind me later on and I'll take a look at it. But yeah, that should all be graded. Okay, but is, 4, is 4B is one of the ones that should have graded itself, no? You know, perhaps you had left uh, left out a problem. I have to take a look at it. You know, some. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, I have to take a look at it. I thought I had them all graded. Okay. Okay. So, any other questions? We are at 7:45. You want? Let's do one more. Okay, just quickly. I'm going to do since there's some some interesting and these are real numbers. I don't know what year they're from. But these are actually real numbers. I'm going to go into analyze, regression. I'm not going to bother with correlation because when I do regression, it's going to give me my Pearson's R. Uh, Pearson's R. Okay, uh, correlation coefficient. I'm going to go into linear. And this time I'm going to choose, anybody want to make a suggestion on what I, where I might find a correlation here? How about unemployment? What do you think unemployment might predict? Poverty. How about poverty? Can you do like an education, like 
Because they are two different variables. How do you combine them? Uh, let me take a look at what we're looking at. Uh, what, do, what do we have? Oh, high school and college. Um, that's the percentage of people that completed high school and the percentage of people that completed college. If I want to combine these two uh, variables into education level, how is that Oh, that's a good question. Uh, you want to combine it into education level. I, you know, I don't think you really could do that here. Because all you really know is, is that 77% of um, uh, people in Alabama completed high school and that 20% completed college. Okay, those 20% also completed high school, obviously, right? They're included in this high school percentage. So as far as level of education is concerned, really all you know is, is that you, you don't know this as, a, as a, a, a category. You know it as a percentage. You could, you could change high school percentage. You could change this into uh, uh, ranges. For instance, you could say uh, what states completed um, 50 to 70 percent high uh, college uh, high school graduation rate, and which states had. Uh, in other words, you could have 50 to 70 percent, 70 to 90 percent, 90 to 100 percent. You could have three ranges. Yeah, so low, medium, and high. So you could change you could change into a variable, which for each state gives you a category, like a low rate, a medium rate, and a high rate of high school completion. You know, so you could actually do that in SPSS. I can show you. We only have a couple of minutes, but I could show you later on on how to use. Remember, uh, we mentioned this at some point, but you know, maybe when uh, we go over the regression analysis, I can do this quickly online also. With that, uh, transform, you can compute a new variable, or you can make a new variable from an, from an old variable, or you could recode a variable into a different variable. So in other words, I can tell, that, I can tell SBSS that I want to take this uh, rate of completion for high school, and I want to do a calculation which makes this a new variable. And for instance, I can make the calculation if it's between zero and and sixty percent, make it a uh, low rate. Uh, if it's between sixty and eighty percent, make it a medium rate. If it's between eighty and one hundred percent, make it a high rate of completion. And so we can change a numerical variable into a categorical variable if we want to do that. So then we may have a new variable in there, and that variable will be say like one, two, and three, representing those three categories. So then you could use that to see how the different categories relate to something else. And it's because it's going to be numerical comparing to the categorical. So you will not use the regression. You will use the ANOVA. Exactly, okay. yes. Okay. And if you had two groups, you might use the t-test. Yeah. And if you were going to change another variable into a categorical variable also, you might have two categorical variables that you're comparing to each other and you use the chi-square. Right? Okay, seems like a lot of work, you know, you know, when you could just do a regression if they're both numerical variables. But and Alex, at any rate, okay, so let's say uh, let's try this again. Let's uh, what's the last one we can try? Analyze regression, uh, linear. Anybody want to propose something? Poverty and how about uh, how about poverty predicting? How about unemployment predicting poverty? Let's give that a try. Okay, unemployment. The unemployment rate and the poverty rate will be a dependent variable. Okay, and I'm going to click OK just to see what I get. Okay, let's see. Our uh, our uh, R is 0.555. Pretty pretty good pretty good correlation, right? Okay, and our R square is 0.3. So 30% of the variability in poverty is attributable to the uh, uh, unemployment rate in the state. Okay, and is it significant? Sure, it's really significant, right? So, so we reject the null hypothesis, and here is our formula that we could use to attempt to predict the poverty rate, uh, the poverty rate given the unemployment rate in the state. So, for instance, if we had all, we had data for only 30 states, and we wanted to have a rough idea of how the other states were likely to behave in terms of unemployment and poverty, 
we could then apply this formula to the remaining 20 states that we didn't have the data for, right? We have the data here for all the states as it happens, but you know, basically very often you're applying this information to, uh, 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 to cases that you don't know to start off with. Okay, and I'm, you know, there might be a lot of applicability here. For instance, uh, if you could show a strong association between BMI and di diabetes, right? Well, it's easy to measure somebody's weight and height you know, it's not intrusive where the, normally for diabetes, you have to take a blood test, right? So maybe you screen for diabetes by using BMI as a predictor of diabetes, you know? So that's kind of like one of the ways you might apply this in a sense. And if you have diabetes or not, that would be categorical. Right? Well, yeah, well, I'm thinking about uh, defining diabetes as your blood sugar, let's say. Okay. okay. In other words, predicting what a person's... Uh, fasting blood sugar is. Use, use BMI to predict a person's fasting blood sugar to see whether or not you should screen them for diabetes. So if somebody comes in, you might not screen somebody who has a good BMI. You know, uh, But I'm not saying that that's a good way to look at it because in fact, BMI might be a very poor predictor of, of uh, somebody's uh, 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 fasting blood sugar. Okay, So I'm just giving that as an example, as a possible example. Okay, guys. So I guess we're at about we're already past 750. So, and you guys at home, let me just see. I apologize that the, the recited interpretation R squared. Um, well, R R represents R represents the correlation. How good a fit? How good how good the association is? How close the association is between one numerical variable and another numerical variable? R squared is derived from R, and it has a little bit more utility also. R squared can be used to, uh, to predict what the, uh, 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 how good a predictor uh, your, dependent, your independent variable is of your dependent variable. In other words, if R, square, if R is equal to 0.9, that's a very good correlation. 0.9 times 0.9 is 81%, 0.81. So that would mean that for R squared, that 81% of the variability in the predictive variable uh, uh, in the uh, uh, result variable is predicted by the predictive variable. In other words, it's a really uh, only 20% of the variability uh, comes from something other than the the x variable or the predictive variable. I'm starting to lose my voice too. Okay, I just want to clarify when you want to make sure your data is homo, uh, homostidactic. You want to run a regression between z squared predictor and z squared response. Yes. Uh, if you get a random scattered scatter plot, that's a good thing. That's true. And also, you can also uh, actually plot the normal, uh, the distribution of the um, uh, 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 errors of, the, uh, uh, of these numbers. The residuals, you can pl actually plot the values of the residuals to see if they're normally distributed. Okay, they should be normally distributed because the errors, you would think the errors are closer to the average. Uh, there's more uh, 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 small errors than there are big errors. In other words, they're normally distributed. Um, and that they're, it's symmetrical, right? You have, you're underestimating it as much as you're overestimating it. So there's two ways you could do that. You could uh, uh, create a scatter plot of the standardized value for the predicted values versus the uh, residual values, and also just simply to do a, uh, a, a histogram to see if it's normally distributed for the uh, residual values, for the errors.